Hello and welcome. This is Admiral's Academia. I'm Admiral Ann Cash. Most folks just call me Admiral. And today is Monarch. Kingdom versus local. So, a uh, little housekeeping before we start. Uh, as usual, if you have any uh, questions during this class, please feel free to tag me in the chat here and I'll answer them as we go. Uh, and there'll be an open section at the end for just any questions you have. Uh, other than that, uh, I also have the Nine Blades Discord open, so if you have any questions that you'd like to, to post through there, um, if you go on to our featured park night, um, and again, tag me uh, if you could, just uh, it'll make it easier for me to find them. Uh, yeah, just post them there and I'll be able to see them as well. So, um, other than that, do do do. If you would like to sign in for credit for tonight, uh, also, nine plays discord uh we do use the amped bot so if you have discord in your kingdom and use the amp bot you can use the same exact way to log in through our nine blades discord so feel free to go grab yourself a credit for attending this okay i think we are just about ready to start looks like we're going okay let's do this just like the majority of my classes, this will be a who, what, when, where, why format. So you know uh, basically the general basis of the structure of the class, where we're heading next, and about how long uh, it will be. So again, uh, we'll be going through the slides as we go. So there'll be a, let's see, directions. There we go. Um, there'll be slides to follow along as we're going. Um, but if you need anything repeated, rephrased, um, please just let me know at any time. And ask questions. I love questions. Never be afraid to ask questions. There are no, there's no silly questions, uh, only silly answers, <laughs> which I will absolutely provide if need be. <laughs> so, um, but yes, any, any questions you have, I'd be more than happy to answer for you. Okay. Let us begin. Who? And your monarch, there's a lot of individuals that you are going to be working directly with uh, or having meetings and conversations and whatnot with. So let's just go through. Uh, who? Monarch. That's you. Congratulations. You're monarch. Good job. Um, other than being monarch, uh, who you're going to be dealing with, other than, I guess, yourself in this case, uh, would be mundanes. Uh, these are going to be uh, such things as park officers, police officers, um, random passerbys, uh, folks that are interested in playing that might be walking past uh, either your event or your park day. Um, any person that is not an amp garter um, that you might have to associate with or answer questions for or any sort of thing of that nature um, very much does apply for any um, official individuals that are outside of your game. Again, um, a lot of this will, will be like police officers, park rangers, things like that. Um, it's going to be very important that you in your role as Monarch, you are the one going to be addressing them and being sort of the public face of your of your group or in some cases your kingdom. So um, other than that, officers. So this uh, will vary between, you know, park and kingdom, of course, but uh, if you are a local monarch, you will be dealing with your specific officers. So uh, that would be your regent, your champion, your GMR, um, your chancellor. Uh, for kingdom, you're going to be dealing with all of those on your main, um, your main group, right? For the kingdom officers. But you're also gonna be interacting with the monarchs of all the other parks that make up your kingdom. Um, other than that, there are trio officers. Um, now, this is this might apply to your kingdom as well, but this is specific um, for sure in the in the nine blades. Um, the trio officers are the ones that handle bands, so um, they are the ones that will deal with any sort of um, anything having to do with the COC, the code of conduct. Um, any disciplinary action, um, those that will be the trio officers. And the trio officers comprise of the monarch, the chancellor, and the guildmaster of reefs. 
So, um, as previously mentioned, another group that you're going to be dealing with is the uh, COM. So, the COM is the Circle of Monarchs. I will go in later about the other COM that you'll have to deal with if, uh, if you are a Kingdom Monarch, but uh, essentially the COM is the group of monarchs that is comprised of all of the monarchs from every park that is in your kingdom. Uh, this is also applied for principalities as well. Um, they would be all of the, uh, the park monarchs. So um, I'm going to, I'll hit the other one later. Um, Populous. Populous is going to be crucial, absolutely crucial. Uh, and this is for both local and kingdom. This is going to be extremely essential because um, this is who you're doing it for. Uh, communication is absolutely key to this role. So you're going to be dealing with your populace a whole lot. Uh, you're going to be doing so in person when there are in-person fields or events, uh, but a lot of online interaction. So um, and they're going to, it's going to be everywhere, right? Uh, it might be emails, it might be um, Facebook Messenger, it might be even just on your Facebook page, uh, or Discord, or Twitch, <laughs> right? Uh, wherever you can be reached, some folks will, will literally call you on your phone, um, or send you a text message if they have that available to them. There are so many, um, there are so many ways that you can get in touch with a monarch and they will find a way. Um, but it's also important for you to be available and give that information uh, so that folks know where to reach you and how and when. That will also be important and I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, so other than that, the BOD, the Board of Directors, um, this is for kingdom specific. Uh, if you are kingdom monarch, you, this is, of course, you're in the Nine Blades, so uh, check with your local BOD or Kapora uh, to see if this applies to your kingdom outside of um, the Nine Blades. But if it is the Nine Blades, um, the monarch of the kingdom has a seat on the board of directors. Uh, the importance of that is that they are essentially the representative of the monarchs of the other parks. So if there's ever, um, you're essentially the liaison, right? Um, you relay important information that is discussed in the BOD meetings to your, your monarchs um, and vice versa. If the monarchs have a concern they want to, to address, uh, they can go through the kingdom monarch and be like, hey, can you bring this up the next meeting? Yeah. And then you do it. Good stuff. Um, okay, so this is this is the big one, and which is super new for us as this is our, our first reign as being a kingdom, uh, which is very exciting. Um, the Interkingdom COM. Uh, this is a group comprised of all of the monarchs and representatives of all of the kingdoms in Apgard. Um, every every monarch or their representative uh, has a single vote, um, has an equal say, uh, and is the representative of their kingdom. Uh, so it is important that Everything that you do as your kingdom monarch on that group is on behalf of your people. It is important that when you make votes, you are not doing so uh, by the your opinion of, of what you want to do, what you think a thing should be. It should be, what is best for my kingdom? What would my kingdom want this vote to be? Um, hopefully it's the same exact vote, but sometimes it could not be. And it's important that you you remember that you're their representative and that you're not there just representing yourself, you're representing them. Um, it's also really, really important um, in this role that you keep up an open line of communication with your populace so they know um, when there are proposals and what is being discussed in those proposals so that they can actually give you um, their, their say and their voice in that and, and let you know what they would like that vote to be. Um, that's, that's hugely crucial because otherwise you have to just, I think they would vote like this. And uh, if you're doing, um, if you're doing the, the Zoom meetings um, where some things will sort of be on the spot kind of votes, um, 
which be very, very small, simple things that don't affect much at times, and some very huge decisions um, where there is literally no time to talk with your populace, um, that's going to be really, really crucial time to to go and, and go, okay, what are what is in the best interest of my kingdom and how do I think they would want this vote to go? Um, and those are the moments where you really have to be in tune with them. So the best way to do that is keep open that line of communication, keep communicating with your populace, let them know what's going on and, and get as much feedback as you can. Okay. So this interkingdom COM, um, the other group that, uh, you might be dealing with is AI, which is amp guard international. Um, a lot of times it will be sort of through um, the interkingdom COM that you'll end up uh, associating and working with them. Um, but other than that, you might end up in situations where you need to schedule a meeting or uh, talk with them privately um, in a message here or there uh, for clarifications or asking for, for anything in particular that has to do with uh, especially things like, you know, the amp guard name, how to use it, if you're allowed to use it. Uh, things like that. So that is going to be the majority of the individuals that you will be working with um, or having an association with, communicating with, well, Monarch. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm going to quickly look through questions in case there's anything. Um, okay. I, I, I hope you, you got that now. Uh, I think that's the link. Okay. Thank you, Rajavia, for posting that. Um, if you're having any issues with that, please, uh, please let me know. Check Discord real quick. Doop, doop, doop. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. What's good? Again, if you have any questions at any time, just go ahead and post those. I'll be checking after every one. If you need anything repeated, rephrased, let me know. Okay. Whoop. Okay. What? Let's get into what this is. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that you will be responsible for doing. Um, and this is the list of them more or less. Um, this also might vary on, on your kingdom, depending on your Kapora. So again, this is, this is what the nine blades Kapora says are the list of responsibilities, um, and the things that you'll be doing, uh, as well as, um, what your kingdom contract, uh, says essentially for, uh, your role in the interkingdom COM and things of that nature. Okay. But a lot of these are going to, a lot of these are going to cross between kingdoms, but there might be a little thing here or there, depending. So ceremonies, you are responsible for, uh, performing ceremonies. Uh, this also could be things such as knighthoods. Um, it's going to be very, very, very important that whatever ceremony that you are, uh, that you are running essentially, um, know all the particulars. Uh, knighting ceremonies are very long, lengthy processes that have very, very minute details and very specific things and specific order in which to do things. Um, and it takes a lot of time of planning and there's a lot of people to coordinate with. Um, so it's important that you do your research, you know exactly what goes into that so that uh, when that moment comes, you are ready for it. Um, I will also be teaching a class on how to perform knighting ceremonies uh, at a later date. So I guess this is a plug to come to Adventure Academy uh, for the Nine Blades Coronation. Uh, I'll be teaching a class on how to perform knighting ceremonies. Um, I think that's like the biggest, I think that one's the biggest one for ceremonies, but this covers any sort of ceremony. Um, public relations. So again, this is uh, sort of that mundane interaction thing. So this is when you're going to be dealing with park officers and police and, and things like that. Uh, any sort of passerbys. Uh, you're essentially the, the public face of, of your, uh, your park, if in local level or kingdom on uh, kingdom level. Also remember to hydrate. Uh, if you are watching, please uh, hydrate along. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is this is one specific to our our Kapora. Uh, again, check your own Kapora to see uh, if this applies to you. 
but for us, um, autocrat or solicit bids. So essentially, um, the monarch has an option to be the autocrat of um, whatever event is happening in their term. Um, so if, right, at local level, that could be mid reign or coronation. Um, at local level, or it could be as high as um, your kingdom's events, right? Uh, if you're if you're monarch of a kingdom, that's going to be the monarch events, right? Uh, the kingdom events that that you could be autocrat of. Uh, so you have the option of to just auto be that person. But um, what I would personally advise um, the other option they have is to solicit bids. So essentially, they open up um, a period where uh, folks can write bids and present them and the monarch would pick an autocrat to run said event. Um, there's usually a time frame of which bids need to be uh, submitted by. Um, for our, our Kapoor has a very specific thing, but we're literally having an all thing uh, running right now um, to make some changes to that. So uh, by the time you watch this recording later, if you're watching this later, um, this might have changed, so be sure to check the Kapora. Um, you always want to be checking the Kapora for updates, uh, and especially after all things, because there may be changes. Um, so essentially, uh, what happens is, if you have a bid period and no one submits a bid, uh, no one wants to autocrat the event, uh, you as Monarch auto-become the autocrat. So even if uh, you decided to you solicit bids and you're going, yeah, no, I don't want to autocrat this event. Oof, doing so much. Uh, whoever wants it, go ahead. And no one steps up. You got it, it's yours. Um, so it's important to understand that if you are running for Monarch, that is a very strong possibility. Um, I myself am already in that situation. Um, you opened up bids, no one presented any. Um, I was interested in in, in doing the event anyways, um, so I wrote up a bid just to have something on hand, but I never, like, never thought that it was actually going to be the one to do it. Um, so I wasn't going to do it if there were anyone so many bids. But there weren't. So, now I'm, I'm gonna be autocrating for that event. So, which is totally fine, and, right, again, it's one of those things you, you prep and plan and understand that that's a very strong possibility. Uh, so then you're, you're prepared for that. Um, essentially, you just really don't want to sign up to be Monarch, think that this is, you know, the list of things you're going to have to deal with, and then all of a sudden have an event that's going to be thrown onto you. Um, if you're not ready for that, then you might want to run, because that's a very, very strong possibility. Um, other than that, right, remember that you have a team, right? Your, your Monarchy team you are all responsible for that event happening. So uh, remember to delegate, remember to talk to folks, build yourself up a team. You may be the autocrat, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to run that event alone. So um, delegate, get volunteers, uh, work with folks and uh, make sure, just make sure the event's happening, but spread the wealth um, for responsibilities. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. This is also a new one, um, fundraising. Technically, it was already uh, a thing that the monarch should be doing. Um, it was important to do, but uh, it wasn't specifically laid out in our Kapora until now. Um, so it's, it's, it is now Kapora mandated, so it is extremely, extremely important um, that, that you take care of that. Um, now, essentially how it works is uh, either you can do the fundraising yourself or you can um, you can make sure somebody is is doing it you you can create a role uh, for somebody to to head that effort um, right for, for myself uh, I created uh, the guild master of coin um, and the individual that has been doing so has been doing a remarkable job um, so shout out to Pandora. Um, so basically your job is to make sure that the job gets done, even if it's not you doing it. 
Um, so that would include if you do right, uh, nominate an individual to fill that role, uh, you don't just send that off and go, okay, goodbye, good luck. Um, you have to keep in communication. You have to do check-ins. You need to make sure that the job's actually being done. Um, this is extremely crucial on kingdom level because um, for, for, for our kingdom, right, we have a, the liability insurance that we pay for. Um, and we have to do so every year. And now we also have the kingdom tax. So that has added exponentially um, what we need to raise. Now, that also doesn't cover any sort of random legal thing, um, any sort of advertising that we might want to do. Uh, purchasing things like website names. and th Like, there's, there's lots of things that your kingdom might end up be purchasing, right? Um, but also being able to run events, right? Um, that's going to take a ding out of the out of the treasury, and you want to be able to to have a good foundation in your treasury so that you have enough money to run, you know, a uh, kingdom events, which there are multiple a year. So being able to 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 do that is extremely important. So that's going to be all hinged on making sure that. Um, either you yourself as monarch or somebody that you are electing to be in that position uh, that that job is getting done. That's one of like the biggest most important jobs as a monarch um, particularly in kingdom level um, and one that a lot of folks don't don't realize uh, so it's gonna repeat so many times make sure fundraising is happening in your park or kingdom because need it to function and run things. Um, help facilitate if you are not the one doing it. Help facilitate. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, doop, doop, doop. Okay, so duties uh, of other officers when needed. Uh, essentially what happens is if for any reason another officer is not able to um, run something, do one of their duties, um, it could be a conflict of interest, it could be um, a mundane life random emergency comes up um, whatever the case might be uh, you are responsible for picking up the slack essentially um, for, for what is your team right? Um, so again it's very important that you know um, you fully understand the roles of your other officers and their duties and uh, what that pertails and how to do it because again uh, as part of your job as monarch uh, it's to also fill in uh, when needed into those other positions. So again, uh, research, research, research. Make sure you know everything uh, before you run. It's going to be very important before you run. Know everything that you're getting yourself into. Um, even even at local level, uh, this this can be a very uh, very hefty job. So it's going to be super important that you are prepared and you know what you are getting yourself into. Um, and also so that you can do the best you can uh, for your park or your kingdom. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. Uh, tree officers, right? We, we previously went over this. Um, again, that's the monarch, the chancellor, and the GMR. Um, again, this is uh, for the kingdom of the nine blades. Uh, this is how we do it. It might be different for, uh, for your kingdom in particular. Um, but for, for us, the tree officers are the ones that deal with disciplinary action uh, for any sort of breaking of the COC uh, that does not get into uh, legal or liability issues. Legal liability issues will bump up um, that to the board of directors. Um, so anything that's under that, uh, the, the monarch, GMR, and, um, and chancellor would be dealing with that, and that's the trio officer's role. Um, also, it will, it will vary, um, depending on local level and kingdom level of, um, sort of when you are dealing with such things. Uh, some things are, some things that are small squabbles at a local level should not be just sent to kingdom monarch. Um, that should be handled at local level first. Uh, and if you are a, a kingdom monarch, I would highly suggest um, that you you encourage the individuals that are coming to you, uh, talk with them and go, have you done XYZ first? 
right? Um, try to to direct them to to their local officers. Um, if if for some reason there is a um, a conflict of interest, if there is a um, if the officers at local level do not feel comfortable for whatever reason dealing with uh, said case, um, then by all means, yes, you're right. That would then extend to kingdom, and then you would be dealing with that with your truer officers. Um, but it's more of just a um, not micromanaging and and making sure that that the local officers uh, have the right to take care of their own park, right? Um, you don't want to just be jumping into their business all the time and going, I am now going to come in here. I don't know any of your players and I don't know the situation, but I'm going to now ban your player. <laughs> um, they're going to have right boots on the ground. They're, they're going to know their players the best. Um, they're going to be fully aware of the situation. And again, it's micromanagement um, to just take that away from, from them to be able to handle. So as a local monarch, right? Um, make sure that you take everything very seriously as it's given to you um and do know that you can you can escalate it to the kingdom um if if you do not feel that it is appropriate for you to be the one handling it um or your trio officers for some reason um or if you feel you need more support or whatever the case might be um also if you if you lay down a ban um, and you want it to extend past your park um, going to kingdom and making sure that you have the support to make that a kingdom level band if needed so communication Every, everything on this on this job is communication so it's just keeping tight communication um yeah okay so um doop, doop, doop. calendar um Again, in Arcafora, uh, monarchs are required to have a term schedule posted 30 days um, within uh, their first term. Um, so, sorry, not within the first term. It's uh, from the day that you get into office, you have 30 days to have that calendar uh, typed up and posted uh, and publicly accessible. Oh, excuse me. Um, the things you're going to want in there. Uh, if you know the dates of events, uh, you're going to want to have them in there. Um, if you don't know the specifics, <coughs> excuse me. Oh my goodness. <coughs> it's very dry in this room. <coughs> Uh, if you don't know the specific date, you, you will already know the month, at least. Uh, so you can say um, the month and uh, TBD, right? To be determined. Um, so events, if you are Kingdom Monarch, um, talk with the local officers and uh, see when their events are and make sure that you put that on your schedule, too. Um, all things, you're going to want to post all things if you know the dates of those. Um, Any, like, any, anything that's pertaining to your term, right, if you know that there are specific this or that. Um, if you are a local level, having um, even just the, right, the days that you meet and the times um, on that schedule as well. Um, when, like, for us, like, the uh, declaration period um, and... Uh, Oh goodness, was it declaration period, the voting period, um, when it ends, all of those um, are very dependent on the date of the event. Um, so it might be a TBD um, when you're first starting off, but uh, as soon as you have those, you know, try to plug those in. Uh, so folks know when, uh, when those are happening. Um, Again, also, right, uh, if you're soliciting bids, you're going to want to have the declaration, or not, sorry, goodness gracious, not the declaration, um, the date of submission and, and when those are up. Anything that would come up where where you know dates to and they, they are important and other people need to know them, into the schedule it goes. So, 
Um, but yeah, the, I'd say the biggest thing is um, events, declaration periods, all things. Um, bids, missions. Just I think like the sort of top end of things. Um, but it will vary from park to park um, what what they need to have in there in uh, kingdom to kingdom. So again, check your Kephoras. Um, doop, doop, doop. Oh, also just know that the schedule itself is a living document. So um, it will change. It will change a whole bunch and it will change often. Um, just make sure that you keep editing as you go um, and keep reminding folks to check it. Um, especially if there are updates and uh, especially if dates are moving around and stuff like that or uh, you're uh, filling in the TBDs and things like that as you go you want to make sure it's just to remind people of uh, remind people to look at it remind people where it is and um, make sure that you're updating it as you go um, it is definitely not a thing where you put it up once and uh, that's it and you hope that it's filled enough um, it will be a living document literally through uh, the rest of your term Okay, uh, list of wards. Um, again, this is our Kapora specifically states this. Uh, it is nothing you should be doing, um, but ours is literally you must do this as part of your job. Um, whatever awards that you give out, you need to give the chancellor a list of those awards so that they can put them into the orc. Um, I I have seen terms before where. Uh, where the monarch didn't have a list and the poor chancellor is just like oh my gosh they're just literally writing each one and what it's for and who it was for as they're being handed out because also once those papers are gone if the monarch doesn't have a list of of what they did they have now just let go of the only documentation they had so Please, please, uh, for the sake of making sure that the awards you gave out are actually, like, being put onto the orc and it's becoming real, um, make sure that your chancellor has that list. Uh, that is, like, really, really crucial. Um, so just type that up. Make sure that you say, um, the, the orc name of the player, um, the what type of award and the number of it, right? So if you're, like, fifth dragon, right? Um, why you're giving it out, right? Um, for a very nicely crafted, uh, ceramic dragon. Fifth dragon, this person. Uh, and then also have the, the date that it's being given. Um, so whatever date court is would be the date that you have on there. Uh, and also who's giving it. Right. Um, so depending on if it's coming from you as monarch or uh, if it's coming from the regent or um, in our case, we actually have some awards that are given out by the champion. So in that case, the champion. Um, it's also really, really good for you to coordinate with your other officers to make a master list uh, so that you can send the whole thing to your chancellor and they don't have to try to be scrambling with three separate lists. Um, so definitely talk with your fellow officers, get a master list and, and send that in. Um, it will also help for, um, for when you're giving out the awards themselves. Um, if you have it like a master list that you know, um, the order that you're giving them out, right? Uh, some folks like to do alphabetical order. Some folks like to do it where, um, the regent does all of theirs first, the monarch does all of theirs next. And for those that have them champion, right? Um, sometimes champion goes first, then regent, then, then monarch. Just examples, right? Um, other folks like to do it where uh, it's done in the uh, the level of award. So like you start with the ones, then you go to the twos and the threes and up. Um, that's personally the way I like to do it. Um, just because having, having somebody get there like a masterhood and then the very next award go out be like here's your third this um it feels a little uh disjointed um yeah also like you kind of also know uh if you just handed out a ninth something and you're not done with court there's gonna be more higher up awards coming uh down the down the line um so it's kind of no nice to know where you're where you're going. So personally, that's just how I like to do it. Um, 
and I like to coordinate with uh, with my regent and when we have um, awards to be given out by the champion. Um, having a champion in there as well, and then basically, um, again, making that master list and placing where uh, those would be given out as you go. So Things are a little a little different and skewed right now in uh, in these online times, so um, things can vary, but uh, yeah, more or less. Um, BOD seat. So again, this is for uh, for Kingdom level. Again, check your Kaporas, your your BOD bylaws uh, to see if it's different in your kingdom. But for the Kingdom of the Nine Blades, um, we do have that BOD seat. So um, that again. <sighs> know what goes into being a BOD member before you run for, for this position. Know what that entails um, and make sure that you have the time to commit to it. Um, the, our BOD meets bi-weekly, uh, so those are meetings that you need to be able to attend. Um, and you are a fully functioning BOD member, right? Uh, so so you need to be able to, to know what it's being voted on. You need to be able to have uh, an informed opinion um, when making those votes and uh, understand sort of uh, what the role of the board of directors is uh, and uh, how best to to operate in that group. Um, doop, doop, doop. COM, right? Uh, so this is um, this is gonna look a little different on on whether or not you're in local or kingdom. You're you're going to be involved with this regardless, um, but uh, your role on there is going to be different depending on if you're kingdom local. So um, essentially, right again, um, there's specific there's specific amount of meetings that have to happen every term, and then there's um, added ones can happen. Uh, communication is just sort of always open uh, throughout the term, but um, voting matters. Excuse me. I uh, usually happen at meetings. Um, anything that has a voting matter, uh, any COM meeting that you are scheduling that has voting matters have to be, again, according to our Kapora, has to be announced 14 days prior. Uh, so that's a whole lot of scheduling stuff. You got to make sure that, you know, your monarchs can be present for it so that vote can happen. Um, and you need to make sure that there's enough time uh, to make the populace aware that there is a voting matter, that this is what it is when you're going to be doing that, that meeting. And whether or not it's public or, or, uh, or not, right? Uh, some monarch meetings will be open to the populace where they can, um, where they can actually like be present and um and even ask questions um some will be open but uh you're only allowed to speak and bring up uh matters if you are a monarch and then you have uh other ones that are closed and that's just monarchs right uh sometimes you might end up with uh nda matters that can't be publicly discussed right uh non-disclosure um so the topic is going to be very, very dependent. And um, also if it's a very quick vote where you have been talking about it for forever and it's just a matter of, okay, we just need to schedule a thing to say yes. We've already all are totally saying yes to this, but we need to, you know, cross our, our T's and dot our I's essentially, right? Uh, make things official, right? Um, having a, a public meeting isn't always necessary for something like that. Um, so that, again, it might be different for kingdom to kingdom. And even monarch to monarch, um, right, uh, in our own kingdom might want to do things in specific ways, but there's some things that are, um, like, have to be done a specific way. Um, so that might vary from term to term. Um, but there are certain ones that are, like, must be done this way this many times and then if you do anything else it's done exactly this way right um so know what it is like really you really really gotta do a lot of a lot of study a lot of research uh before taking on a role like this because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of um it's a lot of inside knowledge you need to have 
uh, on multiple groups, right? There's every, every group has bylaws, every group has, you know, uh, different rules, regulations, and procedures, and you have to know everything. Um, some of these things you are literally running yourself, right? So in the case of the, um, the Circle of Monarchs, if you are the Kingdom Monarch, you are running those meetings. Um, what is being discussed, how you're organizing everything, when you're scheduling, um, the meetings, deciding on whether it's this, that, or the other thing, that's on you, right? You have to be able to communicate and uh, schedule and work all that through with your monarchs. Um, so that's, you're not just somebody that's showing up and, you know, sitting in mute and just saying yes or no here and there. You're the one operating it. Um, so you gotta know your stuff. Okay, so that's the COM. Uh, rules rep. Um, again, this is going to be varying from, from kingdom to kingdom. Um, for us, um, we essentially have a thing where, uh, the kingdom monarch chooses a rules rep. And then, um, after that, every term, um, they, the future monarchs have the ability to, um, if they want the, the rules rep to continue, um, because it has the potential of being like a lifetime appointment, essentially, um, that they just have to reconfirm um, the the candidate, essentially, um, or they can choose to uh, to open it up and replace them and choose a new rules rep. Um, so it is dependent on that monarch uh, which one they choose, um, but those are the options, and that's what's uh, in the Kapora again. Check your Kaporas. Uh, if you are in another kingdom, it's going to be case by case uh, according to how your kingdom operates those uh, specific roles. Uh, doop, doop, doop. But also, ah, before you choose a rules rep or choose to replace a rules rep, um, make sure you understand what the role of the rules rep is. Um, make sure that uh, you take in a whole lot of things into consideration before choosing one. Um, Make sure that you are keeping communication throughout your term with them, uh, making sure that the role is being fulfilled, um, and um, just making sure that you're aware of what's happening and how it affects your kingdom and what needs to be uh, communicated. And uh, hopefully, right, if they're doing their job, which we are very fortunate that ours is uh, doing a very good job, um, keeping that, that open line of communication with the kingdom and uh, getting their input and, and keeping them informed. So that's very, very important. Make sure that your rules rep are actually fulfilling the job. And if they're not, and, and you have the option to replace, you might have to, to go down that route. But again, that's a very important thing that uh, you need to make a very good conscious decision. You need to know what the job is, what it entails, and what is or is not is being done in that role. Okay. Uh, doop, doop, doop. What was that? Okay. So, um, attending GOTC, um, the gathering event that happens, uh, in New Mexico, I believe, um, in August, I believe, um, or sorry, end of July. Um, so this is, an event where all of the monarchs or representatives uh, go to this giant CO international COM meeting. Thank you, July. Um, at this event, um, the actual event is called uh, Gathering of the Clans, uh, but some folks would like that to be changed, so I'm just going to call it the Gathering event, uh, just for clarity. Um, essentially, this is a interkingdom com meeting that it happens live um it is a very very long meeting and uh yeah i mean it's it's pretty it's pretty phenomenal um to be able to see just the representatives of every single kingdom uh be at that meeting um but again right it's a very long meeting uh understand what you're getting yourself into um for us we are required to send a uh the monarch yourself has to go or has to send a representative, um, but you need to send somebody if you're not going yourself. Um, so again, uh, if you are going to be doing the summer term, 
um, know that either you might be having to do a super crazy long uh, road trip or a very, very long flight and might need to also then have travel arrangements, sleeping arrangements, all that sort of stuff uh, scheduled and planned and everything that goes into going to an event that is in another country uh, very, very far away, right? For us, we are... Um, we're in Canada, <laughs> so um, having a passport, that's that's going to be a thing uh, that, that we need to deal with that other kingdoms may not have to deal with, right? Uh, the kingdom of Verlidian Outlands, uh, depending on where their uh, monarch is living, uh, might also be in that position where now it also requires a passport to, uh, to fulfill that role. So, ugh. It gets a little it gets a little tricky. Um, this previous year, we were extraordinarily fortunate uh, for that to be online um, due to the pandemic. Uh, so we we were able to to do our bid for kingdom um, and be present for that meeting. I think it was like eleven and a half hours. It was, it was pretty nuts. <laughs> um, good times. <laughs> um, we survived it. It was amazing, though. Um, but yeah, we were able to do that on Zoom, so that was actually was pretty, really, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, but that was just for this year. You know, every, every year before that, and uh, what I'm going to assume is going to be the continuation of every year after this, uh, when it is a live event that we will have to send somebody. So um, again, you you have to be prepared to either make that trip yourself or uh, be able to send somebody in your stead. Um, if you are sending somebody in your stead, you also need to make sure that, um, oh gosh, they have to sign the non-disclosure agreement, they have to uh, be fully aware of uh, the docket, um, everything that goes behind what is going to be voted on at that meeting, uh, and also what your vote is. Um, basically, they're voting on your behalf, so you need to already know all of your votes for all of those matters before going in. Um, and also, it's going to be important to talk with your with your uh, kingdom beforehand, so that they have an input um, and give you more of an idea of, of what their you know wants and needs are for that for that vote. Um, but you got to send that on. Um, so you got to you have to make sure that. Communication is very, very, very clear, and um, they are your your mouthpiece essentially, right? Uh, they are they are not doing it on their own behalf. They're they're just sending your votes essentially. Um, so you got to make sure that you're very, very clear with that. And um, yeah, communication communication is going to be the key to everything. Right, that's part of our Kapora. That's actually something that um, the next monarch is going to have to deal with. So, very, very important. Um, doop, doop, doop. Where are we on this list? Yes, Interkingdom C.O.M. So, that's one of the things that you deal with with the Interkingdom C.O.M. Um, the other things of being on the Interkingdom C.O.M. Um, there are uh, random meetings here and there, depending on what proposals are coming up, what uh, discussions need to be had. Uh, this could be done either through uh, the Facebook group, where um, proposals will be up, uh, they'll be up for a week, then they're, they're up, so there's, there's a week long discussion period, and then there's a week long voting period. Um, excuse me. Uh, each, each monarch has one vote. Um, and then you just you just post it on Facebook, right? Uh, sometimes it's just doing through that. Um, sometimes it's done through Zoom meetings. Um, so essentially, what 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 has been happening this term? All right, um, I'm certain it'll it'll vary from um, term to term. Um, is that we've been given a uh, or will be given right and have been given so far, um, sort of like a, a survey that we, we list, um, they have like a whole bunch of options for like a whole like month long period of time and you, uh, a whole lot of different days and a whole lot of different times um, in those days. 
uh, and you basically click everything that uh, that you're available to attend. Um, and then they find which one has uh, the most in his meeting quorum. Uh, so it is extraordinarily important that you can attend that meeting. Um, if you are not at that meeting, uh, from my understanding, uh, your kingdom essentially gets a, gets a abstain vote. Um, particularly if uh, it's something that the monarch isn't sending um, their votes ahead of time or um, for the, the random times where there's votes that happen in a pinch where they weren't, um, they were like just a thing that was a part of that meeting where um, there isn't prior stuff. So being there is crucial. Being there is absolutely crucial. Uh, that is the best way for your kingdom to have a voice and to say, um, and, uh, and quite literally, uh, because it, it's right, it's through voice. You can actually talk uh, to your fellow monarchs and tell them um, exactly what's up with your kingdom and uh, why you want to vote in a specific way and, and what their best interests are. Um, so it's it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, important moment. Um, other than that, we communicate through um, something called Zulip. So, um, right, it's a whole other thing, right? So you have to be able to deal with Zulip, you need to be able to deal with Facebook, you need to be able to deal with Zoom. So that's three, three separate things. And that's in addition to everything else that's on here, right? It's a lot. Um, you have to have a lot of time and you have to be very, very organized. Um, so it's just, it's very important that you can keep it all straight and you are available as much as possible and uh, you do your research and you know your stuff and, and you are attending and being um, involved as much as possible. I'm gonna try. Sorry, my cat. <laughs> my what? You wanna say hi? Hi, buddy. There you go. This is Trey. <laughs> hi, buddy. Yeah, you're the cutest thing ever. Okay. Um, There we go. Okay. This is the part of my classes where I get extraordinarily uh, distracted because of the sweet floof. <laughs> Hello, sweet floof. Anyone else have cats? Uh, <laughs> post post in chat if you if you have a pet of some sort and if they are a distraction to you at any point in time. <laughs> The once and future king. It's true. I'm a figurehead. He's got all the power. He knows. He makes all my decisions for me. <laughs> this is the truth. The truth of our kingdom. A terrible secret. Our actual king is is, is my cat. <laughs> Do kids count? Sure. Yep. Yep. That works too. <laughs> Yay. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, um, do do do, Inter Kingdom. Okay, so this is, this is the other thing. This is specific to our Kapora. Anything not listed in the Kapora. If you want to have a sort of, uh, understanding of the gravity of this, of, of being a kingdom monarch, um, that line, that line right there. That literally, you're, you're like in the powers. It says anything not listed in the Kapora. So essentially, if it's not there, that's gonna fall on you. Everything that is not there can fall on you. <laughs> um, it's it can be a lot, and it's gonna be a lot of things that you never see coming. Um, just super random things, and all of a sudden, it's just like, yep, here you go. Um, so you just got to be on your toes. You got to be on your toes. You got to allow yourself time um, for those random things that are going to come up. Uh, be very flexible um, and have really, really good open communication because uh, there's going to be just a lot of random things that are going to pop up. It's lots of red things. Um, we'll go in a little bit later of how to how to deal with the organizational skills of, of that nonsense. Um, do, do, do. Is that it? I think that's, I think that's all the what's. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly check uh, chat to see if there's any questions that have come up. Okay, I'll go on Discord. <laughs> Shameless plug for Paragon Bootcamp. Yes, please come to Paragon Bootcamp. Uh, that will be our kingdom mid reign and uh, the Duchy of Linagon's coronation <laughs> that I am autographing. <laughs> Dates will be posted shortly and an event page. So we have it will be in four months, so we got that. <laughs> sure, I don't see any of those. Doop, doop, doop. Yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, so uh this one. This is a biggie, so I'm wanna I wanna make sure that folks are aware of this. Um, uh, make sure to check everyone's level before uh, uh, before you hand out awards, so that you don't give them uh, multiple third roses. <laughs> um, it goes for every award level. Um, Sometimes what will happen, especially at kingdom level, um, because of when things will be handed out, um, you gotta make sure the orc is up to date. Uh, don't just go on to the orc and assume it's up to date, uh, cause there might be a local level event that's the week before, um, and it might be, like, after you've already done your master list, um, and then you're giving out an award that was already given out. Um, it might be so much as um, an award that that just never made it onto the orc that was given out previously, right? Um, oh gosh, there's <sighs> this happens like like an absurd amount of times um, that I've seen uh, previously, um, and it's, it's happened to me before um, where I've, I've gotten it was just like. I already have that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's good to basically when you're when you're doing the orc dive, because um, any award that you give out, um, especially if if you get award recommendations and you're just uh, seeing, um, I nominate this person for their fifth rows, right? Uh, don't just assume that that that's where they're actually at. Go go check on the orc. Make sure. That that's actually a thing. Make sure that that award hasn't been given out already. Um, a big so a big thing for um, for kingdom level. Um, I think it's very important for um, local level officers to give out local level awards, and that kingdom really should only be giving out kingdom level awards, um, because what happens is that the potential of that gets exponentially higher. Um, so just making sure that like they're keeping separate, right? Um, and also, right, it goes back into that micromanaging thing, right? Um, your your job as Kingdom Monarch isn't to be an overlord and to step into everyone else's things and start controlling and operating and making decisions and let each park function as their park. They should have. Any power that they have should be theirs by right and granted. Um, they should be able to have autonomy over their own park. Um, you are there to help facilitate what is needed. Um, you are there to assist when there needs to be assistance. Um, but you should not be going in and controlling stuff, right? Um, if if there is, uh, for instance, right, uh, Trying to think of just like what uh, what is an award that is just okay like a second a second order of something. Um, let's say somebody does something and um, it was deemed by local level uh, that it wasn't worthy of a second. I mean, that's ugh, pretty rare, but um, hypotheticals. Bear with me here. Um, let's say right the person deems that's not worth a second. They have a conversation with the person and say. Hey, so I don't think it's worth this because of this, but if you do this, right, I'm there for it. Uh, I will absolutely hand this out next term if you just add this, you do this, you right? Um, or even just next time, right, to uh, 
maybe try this, this, or this, uh, and that will be a better chance of getting that. Um, and then a week later, you know, a Kingdom Monarch goes in and, here's that, that award, because somebody gave me an award recommendation and I never looked into it and I don't know the person and I'm just going to trust whatever this award recommendation is. And it was just like, that is hugely stepping on the toes of the local officer. Um, you really should be just doing doing the awards that are in your your area, right? So it's whatever the park can't give out, right? So for Shires, right, that's going to be what, three up. For uh, for Baronies, I believe it's it's six up. For Duchies, that's nine up, right? Um, so all of those, depending on the size of the group, are um, what is considered a kingdom level award. Um, but for essentially, you really shouldn't be um, shouldn't be giving out ones and twos for for a duchy, right? Um, that's kind of not really the territory there. Uh, what you should be doing is if you get award recommendations for those level awards, give them to the respective uh, monarchs or regents or champions, right? Uh, depending on who the individual would be giving out that award, right? Uh, so for us in the Nine Blades, um, we have a award recommendation survey. Um, and on there we get all sorts of level uh, recommendations and um, a whole bunch of them are not kingdom level awards. So uh, what I do is I will take screenshots of them um, and I will send them to the respective officer that would be in charge of giving out that award. Um, so I don't just hold on to those and I don't give those out myself. I go, this has come in for your park members. Um, so again, one of those things of, you know, uh, understanding, you know, sort of the whole lot of the job, right? Um, I, I'm i currently organizing all the award recommendations for the entire kingdom um, at all levels and I need to collect them, I need to get the information, and I need to know who I'm sending it to and I have to do so in a timely manner so it's going to be um, pertinent to them before the event that they would be giving those out so that it's not too late, right? Um, so that's, that's a lot of coordination. Um, so I have to make sure that I know who all of the champions, uh, the regents, and the monarchs are, and I need to know when all of their events are, and I need to know um, when the mid reigns are, and when the coronations are, and then also when the kingdom events are, and all the kingdom officers, and making sure that any word recommendations that come in that, you know, uh, my fellow kingdom officers are responsible for, I need to make sure that they get it, because it's on the, the monarchs, um, email that the survey goes to so I need to make sure that they get those too um, so it's it's a lot to coordinate um, and then on top of that right um, there's also going to be things that um, this is where it gets a little tricky so there's going to be things where um, a monarch of local level will be up for a local level award, but since they're monarch, they can't give it to themselves. Now, in some cases, the regent can, but there's gonna be some weird corner cases uh, where they can't. So then you as kingdom, that's when you can give out local level awards for, for individuals that are up for things that they can't give out themselves. You know, it's confusing. <laughs> um, so it's sort of treading the water and understanding when those corner cases come up and keeping organized so you know um, when to do what and why and who you got to work with and to make those determinations. Um, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, oh gosh. And right now also we're dealing with the crown, um, the uh, orders of the crown. Um, our, our audit is finally ending um at our my my outgoing coronation uh will be the end of that so we've been handing out literally every level crown um at kingdom level for oh gosh like the past three terms i want to say three or four terms um so yeah we've also had to be able to organize all of that and go through all of 
all of those to get everyone caught up to where they need to be. So um, the the good thing is after this audit is complete, right, uh, local level um, officers will be able to give out crowns themselves for local level crowns. Kingdom will still have to be, you know, um, doing the kingdom level uh, crowns, but it will be, um, it means that all those uh, local level ones don't need to be micromanaged by kingdom anymore, which will be awesome, right? Again, as much autonomy you can give uh, your local uh, officers is going to be the best case scenario, right? Um, so good, positive things. Um, yeah. Later on, I'll go a little bit more into um, stuff you're going to need to know about uh, scroll through this about what needs to be made for awards and how to go about finding artists and all of that fun stuff Um, so there's a question, uh, how much time should one dedicate to being a first time monarch on the local level? Uh, I know people have real life to deal with, so what would be a good balance? Um, that's, uh, it varies, it very, very, very much varies. Um, there isn't quite a you must be available this amount of time this many days a week kind of thing um the the thing about monarch and gosh especially at kingdom level is uh you're sort of always on call like just around the clock um you will get messages at 4 a.m um 2 3 a.m like you're you around the clock right it's 6 a.m 10 8 every every ever hour literally every hour um around the clock you'll be getting messages um some things will be extremely time sensitive some things will be nda um things like super severe emergency things that you're gonna have to deal with and it's a lot of just oh my god drop everything this is huge um liability stuff, things that could endanger your park's existence, um, or, or if players are endangered, like, there's, there's a lot that can happen. Um, it's, it's one of those things where you can only plan so much and everything else is, uh, understand that there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of just things you're never gonna be able to account for. Um, who knew we, we'd have a pandemic? Uh, who, who knew that we would have to all of a sudden move everything online? Um, that we'd go a year without being able to be on a field? Um, there are some things that are uh, crucial and sudden and, um, and no planning uh, can account for. Um, this is, this is the, the job. It's the job. Um, it's a lot of just um, assume for the worst, uh, hope for the best, right? Or plan, plan, plan for the worst, hope for the best, right? Um, assume everything is going to um, be a catastrophic thing, and then be pleasantly surprised when it's not. <laughs> um, it's what can help with the decision is starting off at another level of office um for instance right uh if you're interested in being monarch um do something like regent um first don't just jump into monarch especially don't jump into monarch if you haven't been in any of the offices first that's that's a biggie um regent is particularly good um 
because it works so closely with the monarch um you will see all the behind the scenes stuff you'll see all of the um the the time constraint stuff and um how things work and um the commitment level you'll have a very a much closer um inside look um and have a better idea of of what that time feels like um so I, I would say if you want to be a first time monarch and you're not sure if if you have the time um or uh understanding of how much that time commitment is um try another office first and uh feel that out to see um the behind the scenes because that's the biggest thing I, I think the biggest thing with uh monarch at any level is that it is nowhere near as easy or um less time consuming as people see um a lot of the jobs behind the scenes a lot of the job is behind the scenes <laughs> like the majority of it is behind the scenes um just all the meetings that you're doing and all of the the councils that you're on um all of the <laughs> can see the list <laughs> see the list um what people are seeing is not this list they have most folks don't even know this list don't even know that you're dealing with all of this um so also when uh when they're asking you for x y and z and answer x y and z and have a random meeting with them about this that or the other thing um they are they have no concept of all the other meetings that you are also dealing with and all the time sensitive things and all the nda stuff and um just the the immense workload um for me i have three phones going and i think five notepads like like uh binders um and also uh the rule book in a giant binder uh and the Pora and the bylaws and uh, it's a lot <laughs> and i i literally have them with me and i take them room to room i literally like have everything just literally within arm's reach 24 7 um the other night i was literally on a feature park night and i um i couldn't find the capora and i'm looking around for it and it was in my bed because i fell asleep looking through stuff <laughs> like it's it is a round the clock job <laughs> um and it, yeah it's a lot like it's a lot um and most folks just have no idea of the the um the scale of it the scale of it is uh is pretty shocking um i knew that i wanted to eventually run for for kingdom monarch um gosh at that time it was was principality monarch and what i thought i was getting into was principality monarch but hey now we're a kingdom um but i wouldn't i was more than happy uh and i knew what i was getting into when we knew that we were making this bid um and i prepared as such um and it has been an extraordinary honor um to be our first queen um this has been an amazing time and uh i could not be more grateful to my kingdom uh for allowing me to be in this position um but how i prepared for this was uh i planned to do this a year ahead of time um that was when i made the decision i was like i would like to run for you know our top seat and uh i want to be do running by this term so what i did to prepare for it was run for principality regent um because i knew that would give me the biggest behind the scenes now i love being regent and i fulfillingly just wanted to be regent um and planned everything to be regent um and ugh, love it i love it i love that office so much um but i needed to do that first i needed to do that first at this level um i had i had done the same role um in the second term of of uh our principality existing um i was the second uh imperial consort of uh of the nine blades or what was the uh northern empire back then um so but it had been 
we've been we were a principality for 13 years right so it's been quite some time since i was you know in the seat i've been doing a lot of uh duchy office um so i knew that i needed to uh re reassociate myself with this level of office um and to do so in the regent role um actually to be quite frank i i started this process much 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 earlier um by doing um regent and monarch at duchy level um with the thought of in the future i would like to get back up to the higher up offices i will start here um i did a whole lot of office back there um before jumping back up to again what was then principality uh and now kingdom so um it's a lot of just work your way up um Definitely, definitely, definitely do not just jump into Kingdom Office. Do not. <laughs> um, goodness gracious. Um, make sure you do local level first. Uh, because if you if you can't handle it at local level, uh, you will explode in Kingdom. <laughs> like, you will not be able to handle it at all. Um, and, and you will need to drop out of office. Um, it will be too much. Um, like, you might get lucky, but like... <laughs> Um, highly, highly would not advise, um, start, start local, um, and work your way up, especially Kingdom Monarch. Just don't, don't let that ever be your first office, <laughs> please. For the love of, uh, for the love of your kingdom, don't ever let that be your first office ever. Um, if you've never been in office before, it's not the one to start. <laughs> um, doop, doop. Checking any other ones before we move on. Okay, so this is a, um, a ward question. Uh, so what if, what if the person has done stuff for kingdom and it's felt kingdom, uh, and it's felt kingdom should recognize or it's requested by their home monarch? Uh, that's different. That's a different uh, story, right? Uh, if if you have a kingdom monarch, uh, or sorry, a, a, a local monarch that's going to you and being like, hey person did all this stuff at kingdom level would you be willing to hand this out uh yeah like that's not micromanaging <laughs> like that's them going hey would you like to do this it would be cool if you did this on a right um if they're doing something on kingdom level then yeah that's that's fine um yeah I, i'm i would consider that a corner case i would consider that a corner case um there's also like also other awards that are there's lots of different awards and they're a little right so and there's things like jovius and there's things like uh zodiacs and flames and, and stuff like that um and those can be pulled out for specifically uh kingdom stuff right um so like if you were to give somebody like uh like their second jovius um if it was specifically for them doing something on kingdom scale, um, right? Uh, that's in your in your thing to do. You can do that, right? Uh, especially zodiacs. Goodness, like uh, if if you've done something that was super amazing for the kingdom of this month, then uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can, that that's fine. <laughs> um, right. It's just make sure that they're not getting that same. Uh, that they haven't already gotten that same one, right? Because the Zodiacs, you're not supposed to have more than um, one of that Zodiac. Uh, and like, there's only a certain amount that can be given in a month, right? So like, especially if, uh, for instance, if a local monarch has already given out a Jovius, or Jovius, goodness, uh, a Zodiac uh, for the month of whatever, right? Um, but they did something that it was like huge on kingdom level, right? Uh, and you haven't given out um, a thing for that month. Uh, for the Zodiac, right? That would be an appropriate thing for you to be giving out. So, yeah. There are corner cases on that, for sure.
think we're good to move on. Um, uh, there's just one, there's one note that's, um, sort of just an important note to understand. Um, so I'm going to specifically, uh, mention this comment that was, uh, that was posted. Essentially, um, it's going to be very, very important to understand that you cannot please everyone. Um, that if you do this to help this group of individuals, it could be a specific hindrance, like a quite the opposite thing for this group of individuals. Um, it's, um, there are like things that oppose each other and contradict each other and, um, Essentially, the best advice I can give you is the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Um, try to help as many people as you can. Do the right thing at all times. Have the best interest of your kingdom or your park at all times. Make every decision about them. Um, but understand that there will be people that will get upset with you. There will be people that will be mad at you. There will be people that will hate you in the end. Um, there are always going to be cases where you can't appease everyone and you can't help everyone. Um, do the best you can, but if you go in assuming that you can do that, um, it's going to hit you very, very hard um, when that inevitability comes up. Um, do your best. Be gentle and understanding with yourself. Um, I think I actually have a, a thing at the end about that, so we'll go into a little bit more into that later, but just a general note. Um, I missed your question? I'm sorry. Um, could you... Uh, Faye Welling, could you, uh, tag me in it, or... I'm not seeing it. Or, or would you mind reposting the question? I'm not seeming to find it. I'm trying to scroll through stuff. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna go to the next slide, uh, Faye Wellen, if you could just let me know what that question was, I will get at the end of the next slide. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um, okay. Um, organizational skills? Hard yes. <laughs> um, hard yes. Um, it's... I think you could do the job. Yeah, there's no reason why, like... Like, you, you have all of the inside knowledge. You have, I think, more than anyone this term, um, have, have the window of um, sort of the behind the scenes, and you've done a lot of, of that sort of work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, again, right, the, the advice of do, um, do another office before you jump to Monarch. Um, Yes, I would say absolutely, uh, the role that, that you specifically have fulfilled, uh, yeah, yeah, you could, you could definitely, uh, jump into that role. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, I don't, yeah. Why would you think that you couldn't? <laughs> like, oh my god, you have, like, you have so much knowledge and experience and just crazy amounts of organizational skills. Uh, yeah, do the thing. 
Do the thing. I. <laughs> I hope that answers that. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, just because we're getting a little late, we'll jump to the next thing. When? So there's some things, periods of times that you should be aware of. Um. You when you will be starting, uh, your term will be at coronation. Um, this may be uh, referred to as uh, end reign uh, in other kingdoms. Um, for us, we call it coronation. Um, our other event we call mid reign, uh, which is uh, the in betweens. Um, but for monarchs specifically at both local and kingdom, you'd be going in at coronation. Terms are six months long, so again, be prepared for six months. Um, know that, that you're in there for the long haul. Um, and you can only do two consecutive terms in a row. Uh, so again, that would be 12 months. Uh, you cannot, you know, just be a lifetime monarch. Um, and then other things that you're going to want to uh, be aware of, uh, for, for us on our Compora, right? Um, the monarch cannot miss, uh, four weeks in a row or 12 weeks total for attendance. So um, that's your your weekly, um, essentially like going to park, right? Um, your one attendance a week thing. Um, be present. Be present and active in your in your park or kingdom. Make sure that you are actually attending um, and being at the thing, right? Because um, you you will no longer be in office if uh, if those time periods of you missing um, fields, events, whatever the case might be, uh, in your kingdom. That's the thing. So be present. Be super, super present. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, pretty quick self-explanatory. If anyone has any questions on that, uh, go ahead. But I think we can move to the next slide. Again, we're going a little late, so I want to start moving a little, little quicker. Um, Okay, where? So for for our kingdom, um, we are made up of a whole bunch of different parks. Um, it's important as kingdom monarch uh, to know where these parks are because in um, in non-pandemic times, um, you may need to be visiting these parks uh, and be able to get to these parks. Um, so it's going to be important that you know where they are located. Um, so, uh, we as a kingdom are in the, uh, the province of Ontario in the country of Canada. Canada. Um, right, uh, we have several parks. Uh, Wolvenfang is in Sudbury. Uh, Felfrost is in Ottawa. Uh, Linigon is in Peterborough. Uh, Litchwood Grove is in the Kitchener-Waterloo region. Um... Bell Hollow is in Brantford, Twilight Peak is in Toronto, uh, our newest park, uh, Heathen's Cove is in Kingston, and put this, because uh, we've already voted, but it's not official yet, um, our, our newest, newest park that will be joining us, uh, Silver Urbum, um, is located in London, uh, Ontario, not London, England. Canada. <laughs> um, so in parentheses, if you watching this later, you might already be a part of the kingdom. So hi and welcome. Um, but yes, uh, and for those that didn't know, uh, that's sort of a, we're getting another park. Woo! Um, was previously one of our parks and uh, come back home and we're very excited to have them. So uh, that's the makeup of our kingdom. So again, if you are going to be the monarch of your park, it's important that you know where your park is. So local level, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, cool. Okay. Again, if you have any other questions, um, right, I'm going to be zipping through some of these super quickie ones, um, and then we'll get back to answering questions. So again, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw those in. If you could tag me, that'd be super helpful because uh, it's a little hard for me to to read through all the chat. Um, but it's totally fine to chat with each other. Go talk off. Shoo, shoo, do do the thing. Have fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll be over here. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please just tag me. Again, uh, you can do so on the Featured Park um, 
room in our Nine Blades Discord, or you can do so in, in the chat right here on Twitch. Uh, also, sort of uh, just a quick reminder, if you haven't signed in yet, uh, feel free to sign in for credit, especially if you've been here this whole time. Goodness gracious, you earned it. Um, go ahead onto the Nine Blades Discord. Uh, the Kingdom should, uh, if you have a Kingdom Discord, uh, it should be using the amp bot, so uh, understand that we also have the amp bot. So go ahead and just uh, do what you normally do to sign in there onto our Nine Blades Discord. Um, you can actually do it in any room, it works, um, but you can throw that in on the feature park tonight. Okay, moving on. Okay, why? This is, this is important. Um, why, why are you running? Um, are you the right person? Is it the right time? And are you doing it for the right reason? Like, bear, those are the questions you're gonna wanna ask. Uh, ask yourself. <laughs> If you are running, that's the question to ask yourself. Um, though, quite honestly, if someone else is running, maybe consider those before voting. That's also a thing. Um, these are my own personal things for me. Um, and I, I hope those are helpful to you when you are deciding whether or not to run. Um, and again, this is local or, or kingdom. Um, but it gets exponentially uh, higher for Kingdom, um, just because it's a lot. Um, so, knowledge, experience, availability, uh, preparedness, and service. Um, that's sort of uh, my personal breakdown of, of what I think is important when um, deciding such things. Um, you gotta know your stuff. You, like hands down you need to know your stuff if you're if you're gonna plan to run um there's a lot a lot to do and a lot to know and uh if you go in without any of that knowledge uh you're gonna start on a backpedal uh and you're gonna get overwhelmed very quick and the workload is gonna pile up until it is crushing um and at that point either either you will absolutely need uh to drop out um you might get impeached um or you might just hold on to it and pull everything down with you um if you're not willing to to drop out um those are those are possibilities and those are things that you should again consider before running um experience uh have you done anything like this before right um have you been in an office before um if, if you are in a situation, right, there's going to be, there's going to be situations, especially like at local level, um, where no one is running. No one is running and um, others that could really have zero experience, but you've done something similar, right? Um, you might be the best person in that situation to take over that, that seat. Um, so what experience do you have? What experience do you have with working with teams, being the leader of teams, um, communication with others, um, big old workloads, um, managing your time, uh, keeping organized, um, things like that, right? Um, those, those might be enough for you to, to do it. Um, but essentially what it is is Right, the, the best case scenarios, right? Um, if you're going for uh, for like Kingdom Monarch, uh, if you've been if you've been a Duchy Monarch before, then I mean you're in a good you're in a good position, right? Um, if you've done Kingdom level office in other offices, you're in a good position, um, right? Like there's there's going to be certain things where uh, your level of experience from this or that might really help you. Um, but, you know, go through and see if, think it through, think it through. Um, availability. This, this job takes a lot of time. And again, right, like I said previously, it's around the clock. It's going to be just, you're going to get messages all the time, all the time. Every single day around the clock, you will get messages. Um, and people asking you to do stuff all of the time. Um, 
in my next thing i'm going to go a little bit about boundaries and um things like that but um it's going to be important that that you you are available as much as possible um but also right people have mundane lives this is right um you shouldn't be right i am in a very unique situation um and for individuals like me where just i have nothing but time right um I'm I'm super open about my medical stuff. Uh, I am disabled, right? Um, I I don't have a job. I can't physically work, right? Um, so all I have is time. So and I've had a lot of experience with this sort of stuff, right? I've been in office for forever. I've been playing for I think I'm getting to my fifteenth year, right? Um, this was I had the time to do this, and I I knew what I was doing. I've had experience in positions like this, um, super available, <laughs> just super available. Um, but even with that, I've had things where I just like, I don't have the time because I'm already in another meeting. I have two more meetings tonight. I can't have this meeting because I am literally booked up for the entire, like literally from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, I'm doing meetings and other tasks to the job so there's certain things that you're gonna have to say no to um reschedule just reschedule everything um it's a lot oh god it's a lot <laughs> but yeah it just it's if you do have a lot of you know mundane things um job family stuff like that other commitments um other hobbies even right uh it's gonna be one of those things of just time management can you manage the time can you make availability and openings uh to be able to uh to fulfill your roles know what you know uh you need to be at um have a decent amount of time that you can you know answer questions and be reachable and stuff like that it's more of time management than anything um but if if you can never read your messages and you can't attend to anything ever, then that would be considered you're not available, <laughs> right? Um, prepared, right? Again, it's it's doing all the research ahead of time. It's knowing what your term plans are. It's it's having it's having a plan. It's it's knowing your stuff. It's knowing your stuff before you go in. Um, you don't want to start looking up. Um, all of this stuff after you're already in the seat. Um, you're too late at that point, right? Um, it's a lot of pre-planning. You should, you should be really knowing this stuff before you declare. That's what I'd say. Um, have all of this prepped, know exactly what you're getting into, um, do your research, be fully um, prepped for what you want to attempt um, before you ever run, before you declare. Um, that should not be a after thing. Um, no, okay. <laughs> There's going to be some rare moments where, uh, you are randomly thrown into a thing. Something's gonna, all of a sudden, uh, you need to jump up into that seat. Uh, do as much as you can. Be gentle with yourself. Um, be understanding of the randomness of the situation. Um, do, do your best. Whatever your best is, try your best. Um, it might be it might be a rough start. It might be a rough start um, if you don't have the time to get through the planning. Um, if you're in a right corner cases happen, they happen all the time. Um, there's gonna be random things where where you're just no one's running all of a sudden. All right, it's a day before declarations close, um, and no one is willing to do the thing. You're not going to have a whole term planned out. You're not going to go through all the the Kapora and the bylaws and you're not going to have the time, right? This is uh, primarily you see this at local level. Um, understand that you have a team, right? Um, make sure that you just keep open communication with your fellow officers and you delegate. Uh, delegation is going to be your best friend uh, if you have um, if you have time constraint issues and if uh, if things happen and you're overwhelmed with the workload, spread the wealth, right? Um, understand who you can talk to, who you can work with, who can help you out. Um, 
but if you get to a point to where you are completely overwhelmed and it's just uh and you are essentially stuck in that position where it's like literally it's you or literally no one um reach out um also reach up uh to kingdom level officers uh because a lot of times they'll be uh able to help you out and i'll also help you like know uh how and when to delegate and who to go to and stuff like that and might be able to uh take some things off your load also so right um your 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 um your kingdom level officers are are there to help assist you um at local level as well so uh, make sure you reach out to them if you're having any sort of issues or um honestly even if you need to vent um sometimes that's you can literally just go to your kingdom officer and just be like i don't know who else to talk to about this right and just because gosh they can relate <laughs> so um know to reach out um and all right the last thing on this is, is service um you should be doing this job to serve others um this should never ever ever be a self-serving position um do not do this to buddy hook up your friends do not do this for a shiny title at the end um that could like worse reasons that's not the right reason to do this job ever um you should be doing this because you think that you are the right person to be doing this, that this is the right time that you should be doing this, um, and doing it because you feel that you will be able to help as best you can, that you will be in a situation where you can help your park, your kingdom, uh, whichever one uh, that may be, but to help others. Um, this whole entire job is to serve. This is to help others not you um yeah <laughs> goodness gracious um you're gonna be in for a really bad time if uh if you just do this be like oh i want a shiny title um <laughs> oof <laughs> you, you're gonna have a bad time and honestly which will lead to you not getting the title um that's the thing i have I literally cannot tell you how many times um, I have heard individuals say that they wanted to run because they wanted to be this level noble. Um, every single time I have heard that, and the amount of times I have heard that is staggering, um, to be quite honest. Um, there has never been one of those individuals that ended up getting that shiny title that they ran for it because that was the reason why they ran so they didn't prepare they didn't know what they were doing they just went i want the thing um so they did not help their populace they did not do the things that they were supposed to do they did, had a terrible term and then they didn't get the title self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> so do it for the right reasons okay um we're gonna get into the last slide. Um, quickly wanna just go through and check to see if there are any questions uh, before we move on. Okay. Doop, doop, doop. There is a shiny title. <laughs> yes. Yes, this these these offices can and in shiny titles. <laughs> it is a thing that can happen. Um yeah. Yes, and sometimes you get to wear a shiny crown for a bit. <laughs> um <laughs> oh 
I've just come to the realization that uh, not everyone tags me, so sometimes there's questions that I miss them, so I I do end up actually just like reading through things just in case. <laughs> But I do enjoy reading. Honestly, I really, really love uh, just reading everyone's chats as they're talking with each other. Uh, sometimes I'll um, I'll try to do like a quick scan for questions, but uh, I do. When I'll go back and, and check, uh, the chat is saved um, with how we do the recording. So uh, yeah, there'll be all the sorts of community like conversations that are happening during these classes that I will have no idea they're happening in the middle of the class, and then they're just like really amusing easter eggs later when I when I read them I'm just like oh my gosh did they really <laughs> it's hilarious it's always really entertaining so yes no keep talking <laughs> okay uh, we'll move on to the how um, doop, doop, doop. again if there are any actual questions um, please let me know again tag me is gonna be the quickest way for me to be able to write to that and then uh, they well and Rajavia can continue their shenanigans <laughs> I love you guys so much. Okay. Okay, so let's get into the how. I'm gonna have a quick swig. Again, please remember uh, to sign in. Um, the Kingdom of the Nine Blades Discord is where to do so. Uh, if you are still here, goodness gracious, you were in that credit. Go and grab that for yourself. Um, we do end the, uh, the attendance tracker um, when the class ends. Um, we tend to end around like 10 p.m. ish, so uh, so want to make sure that you can grab those credits while they're open. Okay. Uh, this is the last slide, so um, again, after this, um, open it up for any last minute questions, and then we will wrap up the class and call it a night. Um, thank you so much for everyone that has been here uh, for this whole time. Goodness, uh, you're all amazing. I really appreciate you coming here. Um, yeah, let's finish up. Okay, so how? CQs. So um, this will vary from kingdom to kingdom, but um, for our CQs, they are done very differently than most kingdoms. Um, we, we used to do it the super, super traditional way, um, but uh, we do things a bit different now. Um, and I really actually like uh, the new system that we have, um, but it's, it is a transition. You really need to know uh, that it's a thing. Um, essentially, there are uh, specific things that uh, folks need to do depending on their office, on whether or not that's um, uh, cultural uh, things or, or war things. I'm gonna put those uh, quotes. Um, so, like, um, if I am running for a monarch, um, I can judge a ANS tournament and that's the one cultural qual I need um, and then I can reeve a battle game that's one of the war ones and then I can uh, run a quest and that's my second war skill um, then I need to hand those over essentially um, give that information to the arbiter and then they determine whether or not uh, those qualify as um, my crown quals. So once they give the check and say, yes, that qualifies, uh, then I'm good to go. Um, so the cool thing for, for us, um, we have six months to do it. Um, so I can, I can get my crown quals done six months before I ever run. Um, so it's, it's anything that you do um, that hits in those, uh, those categories uh, throughout the term, um, starting on at the event that your the term starts, right? So for us, um, if people uh, ran something or did something uh, specifically at Battle of the Dens, right, when this term uh, started, they could use that for the Cronquals uh, that are um, going on for, uh, for this term, for the officers running for next term. Uh, so it gives them uh, much more time to get them done and if you're running, like, sort of the, the concept is, if you're running for an office, you're probably doing those sorts of activities already. Uh, so most likely they're already done before it's time to run. Um, then you also need to do your core test and your Reeves test. That's kind of across the board. Um, 
but yeah, so that's pretty much what it is for for monarchs. Um, but essentially, the biggest advice that I can give you is um, read your Kapora. Read it very, very carefully and understand what your crown qualifications are. Um, make sure that it's you're not going in with no knowledge of um, of what your crown qual is. Um, where it's like, back in the day, uh, it would be, you had to do, like, you had to fight in the War Master Tournament, and you had to, um, you had to have seven passing entries in Dragon Master, um, and a Reason Kapora Test. <laughs> uh, and back then, uh, Kapora Tests were not open book either, so you had to memorize all of them. Nuts, back in the day. Um, but yeah, I've been doing it a very long time, and that's why I'm a Master Hydra. whoop de doo It's also, we have a, uh, for those out of Kingdom, um, uh, we believe that the, the Hydras have, um, a mating call and a mating dance, um, the call and dance of the Hydra, uh, the call is whoop de doo and, uh, the dance is, uh, Woodley Arms. So, uh, whenever anyone receives a Hydra, it is customary to perform the, the, uh, the Hydra dance call. whoop de doo And everyone in court does it, and it's, uh, pretty fantastic. So, now you know. <laughs> and I may or may not have created a, uh, ANS tournament for folks that need last-minute crown quals for their culturals, and it is called the whoop de doo tournament, and that's why. I mean, could maybe happen. Maybe it did. Who knows? <laughs> Side eye. Okay. Um, <laughs> so again, you're going to want to know what your crown quals are. Um, know so ahead of time before you're running so that it isn't a last minute. Like, oh, I need to have what by tomorrow? Um, don't put that stress on you. <laughs> um, try to make that process as, as easy as possible because, goodness gracious, you are going to be having to do so, uh, so much stuff um, already to be planning for the term, having to, uh, not plan for the term because you're too busy, um, trying to get through declarations, um, that's a lot on a person, so it's, it's better just to get them off, uh, as quickly as possible, just to get them done and out of the way. Okay, um, preparation, right? Just gonna say this till I'm blue in the face. Um, that's a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of preparation. It's, it's, right, you're, you're going to be wanting to, to read through everything having to do with the Interkingdom COM, the BOD, the COM, you're going to read the Kapora up and down, know that whole thing. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> have, have a, a plan of how you're going to communicate with your, your Kingdom officers, how you're going to plan to, uh, communicate with the other monarchs, right? This is all for, you know, like, kingdom level stuff, right? Um, plan any sort of term plans that you have. Um, even so much as writing the posts ahead of time so that you don't have to try to make that up on the, like, last minute. Um, there's so much, there's so much that you can prepare for. Um, the calendar, right? You can prep that. Um, yeah, actually. Like, I am, I am somebody that, like, super preps for stuff. Um, there, I remember when I was, uh, I was the monarch of Linagond. Um, there's a picture of me at a demo, um, that I was running, um, where there was, like, some downtime and I was writing the next term's calendar. Um, and it was, like, a month before the term and it was like I had already finished the term calendar uh, 30 days before my 30 days started. <laughs> um, I I just over prep and plan. <laughs> um, so that's why I like to, to know well ahead of time if I'm running for a thing so that I have everything prepped way, way, way in advance. Because um, that way it doesn't become overwhelming when we get to it. Um, so again, preparation. Uh, if you are in in the role, right, let's say 
you got it. You you have been voted in. Congratulations, your monarch. Good job. Um, and thank you for your service. Uh, delegation. It is okay to delegate. It is okay. Um, and sometimes extremely necessary. Uh, and sometimes unneeded. Right. It is going to be dependent on you, your personal style of, of how you like to uh, perform office in your duties. Um, and also, like, the when the needs arise sort of thing. Um, knowing what uh, is reasonable for you, what you can handle and what you can do. Um, and knowing when something's too much and you're taking on too much, right? Um, it's, it's very, 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 very important to know your limits um, and to not, do not fill up your plate to where uh, things are going to start spilling over, right? Um, it's going to be very, very important that you, what is time, time management's in there, okay. Um, it's going to be very important that you um, have a very strong understanding of your time and how much you can do and how much you can do in that time and what is overwhelming for you and um, what is just you don't have the time to finish and do. Um, you might be more than able to do the thing and you can do the thing, but you're also doing all these other things and there just isn't enough time in the day. Um, that you're gonna need to delegate. Um, so it's, it's gonna be very, very important that you know who to delegate to, what you're delegating, um, and making sure that uh, you still keep communication and you're doing check-ins to make sure that the individual that you de like delegated the thing to is actually doing the thing. Um, you do not want to be in a situation where you hand something off, a part of your job you hand to somebody else and go, okay, bye, <laughs> hope it gets done, right? You're still monarch, you're still responsible for the list of uh, things being done. So if, if you just let those go and don't check in and, and they don't end up getting done, that's still on you for the thing not getting done. So even though you did good job, you delegated to make sure it was getting done, you didn't follow through. You gotta follow through. Finish the thing. Um, okay, so this is it's a big one. Boundaries. This is this is one I had to learn, um, and I'm getting done better with it at this term. But um, there's been some moments where I have not um, set boundaries because people will walk all over you. Um, they will demand all sorts of things from you. Um, they will treat you very poorly and, uh, have unrealistic expectations. Um, and they will 110% take you for granted. That's a thing. I have never heard of a monarch that did not face that. Um, so... <sighs> Sometimes it's a... I am not available from this time to this time. Understand that unless it's an emergency, I will not be answering things from this time to this time. My phone will be on silent. I need to be with my family. I need, I'm at work, right? Whatever, you know, your own personal thing is. Um, don't like, be clear. Um, for, for me, a lot of it has been, um, uh, like text-based things. Um, I've just right out the gate, I was just like, hi, I have a learning disability. I have issues with text. Um, if you want to have a meeting with me, I will more than happy, uh, that to set up a voice chat with you. Um, I can even do, uh, like voice recording things, right? To have conversations with folks, uh, through Facebook Messenger. Um, but expecting me to write you a novel, um, to have a conversation meeting is not something that I can do with my disability. Um, just right off day one, I was very just, this is how I work. Um, and folks have been really, really great. And some folks have been not great at all. <laughs> um, and, uh, have unrealistic expectations. Um happens. 
Right, heavens. Um, in other terms that I've done in the past, um, real rough. <laughs> really, really rough. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that I made that, that clear off the bat and I stuck with it. Um, but it's, it's sort of things like that. Um, there's, there's still other things where, um, just, folks will have just very, very, very own world civic expectations. And there'll be times where, um, like for, for me myself, again, I am super, super open about my medical stuff. Um, cause I think that it is important for folks that are, that have chronic pain and chronic illness, uh, to not be a taboo, um, that we should be able to just live our lives out in the open and that it be a normal accepted thing that we shouldn't be ashamed of being um, uh, disabled. So I, for me to feel better about my own situation, I am open about it in the hopes that other people feel more comfortable uh, being open about it and 100% do not do so if you do not feel comfortable, right? This is what I'm choosing to do. Um, so this is living my best life. <laughs> um, but there have been times where uh, I will be in a real bad medical situation and um, I'll have somebody yelling at me because I'm not dropping everything to do a thing. Um, and it's just like, I'm going into a paralytic attack. I'm not going to have the use of my hands. I will become a ragdoll and I will only have my mouth. So, can I get back to you when I'm not paralyzed? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> right, um, and, uh, oh gosh, there's been other things, Oops, other things where it's just, like, folks will just ask, 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 and they won't kind of really, um, take a beat and realize what your situation is. Um, they expect just things to be done and they don't um they don't always equate that you're a person and a human being behind all of those requests and uh the human body can only do so much <laughs> right um yeah <laughs> um yeah but i'm also like i'm i'm totally nuts and uh do all sorts of things um uh, that are like wait you're doing what you had surgery today <laughs> um, but also what folks don't understand, like in my particular situations, um, for instance, me running into town hall on discord, uh, the night of my surgery, um, the, the difference would be, um, me just laying in bed, not on discord, being by myself and being super focused on the pain. Uh, so for me to be on discord talking about amp guard stuff, um, with people I care about, um, that's a very good distraction for me. So I am able to do the thing. Is it extraordinarily difficult? Yes. <laughs> Is it lots of pain? Sure. Um, but the alternative is like, this is, this is like, I'd be just sitting here doing nothing anyways. Um, me talking is different, right? Now, if it was a town hall where I had to go to a place and do the thing. No, that would not be happening. Um, but like, even, even then, right. I was, I was being asked to do things and, and run things and organize things. And it was the day of my surgery. Um, so I, at times folks will forget that I am in a medical situation. Um, and just expect things and it'll be like, okay, I'll do my best, but ow, and uh, okay. Um, so it can be rough. It can be rough, right? So if you're not able to do things, um, you gotta, you gotta speak up. You gotta speak up and go, okay, hey, so this is, this is actually unrealistic, or this is really, like, n not cool, <laughs> right? Um, but you, you have to speak up, and you have to, you have to advocate for yourself. The biggest thing is you have to advocate for yourself. Um, this goes across the board for, for any office, in any situation, and really anything about Amp Guard across the board. Um, if folks don't know, they can't do anything about it. Um, if you do not tell them, um, then there is no reason for them to know that. You have to, you have to actually uh, speak up if you, like, 
folks are are more than willing to make accommodations um but if they don't know they can't do anything about it so it's important to just communicate make sure that um you're you're very open about your situations and explain and are transparent uh so that you know you are in a good place um and you are able to do the things and they also have more of a better realistic understanding of what you can and cannot do and what is um what is unrealistic and unreasonable um and what is totally possible and totally cool and have no issues doing right communication <laughs> but yes it's a lot of boundaries um and the next one is communication oh, gosh. communication is everything it's everything um and it's one of the hardest things it's one of the hardest things um it seems it seems easy but it is very 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 hard um my biggest tip is to avoid text <laughs> um and that's not just because i have learned disability and a little text um text does not have tone um most arguments and most on like misunderstandings and folks getting like angry at each other tends to be text it ends up being uh they read it angry in their heads um their like inner inner voice when they're they're reading to themselves is all like angry and then they put um they put like a twist on it like ah what they mean is this oh they're saying this because of this and you're just it's just it's just your your mind is 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 your own worst enemy and you will assume everything is worse than it is. You'll have intrusive thoughts. You'll start, um, you'll start just making it so much worse. And then you talk to the person like the very next day, and it's just like, oh, are they not mad at me? Oh, is this? Oh, we're cool. Oh, oh shit, did I just read that wrong? Like that happens so much. Um, like staggering, like a staggering amount of time. Um, and, and that'll be stuff for, like, also, like, COC stuff that you'll see. Um, where it's just a misunderstanding because of miscommunication because somebody read text as angry when it wasn't. And all of a sudden, people end up hating each other. And it'd be like, so that's very much not what they meant. And there was no this behind it. There was, no, no, this was actually, okay, so no, 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 <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh, please, no. Um, and if you're lucky, you can fix that in time. If you're lucky, you can um, help facilitate that communication and, and get them back on the right track. Um, some things you can't. Uh, and if you can't get folks to come to the table, then there's, right, you're kind of stuck at times. Um, Sorry, man, I just read your comment. It just popped out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> it is it is shocking how many times uh, you'll just... You'll think somebody hates you, and that's not true at all. <laughs> and uh, it's just like, you read something wrong once, and you just assumed that, like... It happens. It very much happens. Um... Sorry, I'm just reading all of these ridiculous comments out of the corner of my eye now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Composure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically it's it's a lot of um So understanding that um we as people communicate um with more than just words, right? Um we communicate with our body language. We communicate with our tone, um, not just the words that we're saying, um, but also words, right? Um, but sometimes folks will think that they're saying this and what they mean is this, but it will be interpreted differently when it comes in uh, the other way. So um, having body language and tone um, behind that can help um, assist with the the word choice mix-ups if that makes sense <laughs> um right y you can tell if somebody's genuine if they're looking you in the eye and just like seriously this just like 
right? But if I'm just like, yeah, no, I super care about what you're talking about right now, right? I have said the words, I super care about what you're talking about right now. But my body and my tone said that's not true, <laughs> right? Um, in text, they'd be like, oh, wow, this is a super genuine person. They actually care. Um, you can't tell that with text. Text is terrible. That only gives you one piece of of the whole, you know, the whole presentation, as it were, right? Um, so when stuff goes down and there are arguments and bad feelings and concerns, first question is, was it done in text? Start there and see, see how often that comes up and uh, see if that can be a fix for things. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say as much as possible, talk with people. Just like actually talk with people. Um, if you can do so in person, amazing. Um, if not, there are ways to, to do voice stuff uh, online, right? Um, there's video stuff, right? Um, but at minimum, even voice stuff can really, really help with this stuff. Um, yeah, that. <laughs> okay, um, teamwork. Okay, it's very, very important to understand that you are not a lone wolf. Um, when you are in office, you are a team. The whole, the whole team, you are a team. Um, you need to be there for each other. You need to work well with each other. Um, you need to be able to um, support and facilitate what the other officers need um, and what they want to do that term and, and help each other along the way. Um, when you're doing delegation, it might be to each other. It might just be like, oh God, I need to, I need to go do this thing right now. Can somebody make this post, right? Even so much as that. Just can somebody, we've been talking about this for the past hour, you know exactly what needs to be in there. Can somebody make the post for me? Oh my God, I love you, you're awesome, good. I'm gonna go do the meeting, right? Um, even so much as that, that is a huge, huge boon, is just even so much as, can you make this post for me? Um, delegate if you need to, again, right? But work together as a team understand that that you are going to to succeed or fail as a team um it's so important just not to don't put them away don't um don't exclude them and don't um don't break off communication um try to work together as best as possible and understand that you're in it together um and make sure that that y'all uh, lean on each other and are there for each other and support each other because uh, again um, it gets pretty it gets pretty crazy sometimes um, and folks can be very uh, I'm gonna be blunt cruel folks can be very cruel to you as an officer um, across the board we um, we have an issue in our game uh, quite frankly of um, I think the term was volunteer abuse um, People can be very, very cruel. Very, very cruel. And, um, and unforgiving. And, um, the other officers will understand that experience and, and be going through it too. And when y'all are going through those periods, it might be at different times, um, but being able to support each other and be there for each other, um, Again, even if it's just to vent, um, that's your team. Go to your team. Talk with your team. Um, right for for cases of like uh, NDA stuff, right? Those are the trio officers. Talk with your trio officers when sh when stuff gets real and and you are very uncomfortable about some really messed up stuff. Um, literally the only people you are allowed to talk to about it that's your team talk to the people that are on your team that you actually can legally discuss with right um do not have nda stuff and you go tell your partner right uh they are not legally allowed to know that information that sensitive information you can't just go and tell people right you can't tell your parents you can't tell your significant others you can't tell your brothers and sisters um you can't do that Legally, you can't do that. Um, 
but the trio officers are the other ones that know that super sensitive information. Um, and sometimes you deal with some messed up stuff and sometimes, uh, like, keeps you up at night stuff. Um, and sometimes you, there needs to be somebody that you can talk to. Um, and they're literally the only ones you can. So, your team's there. You can understand that they're there for you, and you gotta be there for them. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay, transparency. Again, we're getting to the end. There's only a couple things left, so if you've got those questions, please feel free to throw those in there. But we are wrapping up. Uh, transparency. Uh, as much as humanly possible, make sure that you're, you're just open. Just open about everything. If anyone ever asks about a thing, just, yep, here you go. Um, there's only the cases of, um, like, NDA stuff and, um, certain things like, uh, what somebody is voting for kind of thing, right? Um, that you can't just be like, yeah, here anyone anywhere right uh there's certain things that you can cannot discuss but anything that you can discuss in anything that you can disclose um that should be just be open as much as possible communicate let people know what you're doing let people know what's going on um the the more that you keep behind doors the more they will think that you are um oh gosh there was a term oh there was a term uh shadow council yeah yeah they'll think you're shadow council um and, like, I'm just saying 99.9% .9 of the time, that's not the case. Sometimes it is. There's some shadow councils that exist out there. And please, I guess also, please don't be a shadow council. I guess that's just a generic request. Um, right, I guess it can happen. But most of the time, it's, it's, it's on the up and up. And it's like, you don't realize somebody will want, like, a specific thing of information because it doesn't seem important at all and that it, but to that one person it's like super important um so just be open be open about everything you can be open about no reason not to just be super open um okay that's transparency organizational skills this is crucial 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 repeat stuff repeat stuff um this job is so much organizing things, um, keeping track of things, um, keeping track of appointments, award recommendations, um, the commitments that you have, uh, assigned yourself to, um, the things, checklists, checklists for days of all the things you need to get done. Um, it's a lot. It's just a lot. Um, I'd say your best friend is, is have, um, have a notebook with you at all times, uh, with a pen attached or pencil, depending on you know, your preference. Um, but just write everything down. Just write everything down. Have have a record of it. Um, I I also do stuff on my phones, right? So like on my notes, right? I'll I'll type in stuff. I'll take screenshots of everything. Um, I have over 5,000 screenshots on one phone alone, and that does not include anything that's in the, uh, what was the, the cloud thing. Um, so much, just so much. Um, half this job is just screenshots. Um, but it's just, it's reminders of things, it's it's records of things, it's a lot of just keeping records and, and keeping things fresh because everyone's just gonna be throwing stuff at you all the time just be like oh hey don't forget this and it'll be like a passing comment as they go and you're just like about what oh nope you're gone oh okay <laughs> right like and then you have to try to track that person down and then you have to try to get them to communicate and then they're just like hey remember that time where you said that you remember that thing but then you walked away and then like what was that thing <laughs> right like you'd be shocked how much <laughs> how much that happens um but yeah, right, and also, oh my goodness gracious, back to the boundaries thing. Um, a big thing I've had with this term um, that I learned from previous terms, um, when people give you word recommendations, if you have a survey and, and they just go, hey, you should give somebody an award for that, send them the link of the survey and ask them to do the survey. Um, it is unreasonable. Um, to have somebody have to 
keep track of all of the award recommendations in an entire kingdom where you have random things being um, just randomly blurt out on Discord uh, or Zoom or something like that, Facebook Live, um, text messages, uh, private messages in Facebook, uh, messenger, uh, private messages in Discord, um, random things in uh, subthreads of subthreads of subthreads and random uh, and random threads in seven different groups. Um, I could go on, but you, you get my point. Um, trying to keep track of all of those and not forgetting them or where they're located um, for six months is not a reasonable thing to expect of a single individual. Um, Having them all be on a survey where they are all in the same place and you can quickly, you know, scroll through them and check through them, make notes, go do your orc dives, uh, go send them to the proper officers. Uh, that's more reasonable to expect of a, of a person that's trying to do that for an entire kingdom for a six month period. Um, so can I tell you how many times I have gotten um, flack or straight up yelled at um, when asking them to fill out the survey, which I've timed takes about 30 seconds. Um, you shouldn't yell at people for uh, trying to make sure that somebody's award recommendation is is safeguarded and taken care of and not forgotten. Um, that's unnecessary. We're volunteers. <laughs> um, boundaries, folks. Boundaries. Um, so yeah, like it's, you're, you're gonna get yelled at for everything. Just everything. And um, yeah. <laughs> um, that organizational thing, right? Being able to have um, to have a survey where you have everything and it's all in one place. That's been a huge, huge boon. I like I tried to do it. Um, I tried to do it the other way, where I just took everything that anyone just randomly threw at me at any point, and they were split up between screenshots. They were split up between. Um, notes in five different other books, um, in my, my typed up notes, and, um, I, I was just petrified the entire time that I was gonna lose or forget, or, and there'd be times where it's like, having to look through everything to find one recommendation, um, was nuts, it was just nuts, because it was all over the place. And then there was a point where I couldn't find one of my notebooks that had, like, a whole bunch of them, and it was just like... And I found it, thank God, but, like, that could have ended very badly. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't a realistic way of, of going about it, right? Um, so having boundaries and, and just going, hey, please just fill this out. I can't just, just throw them out randomly. Um, it's, it's not going to be the best way to, to accommodate the person that you, like, if you want this person to actually get this award, please actually um, fill out the survey and... If you have other ones in the future, please fill them out. Um, it's stuff like that. It's a lot of just know how you want to organize, right? Everyone's gonna have different methods of how um, how they organize things, what uh, programs they use, what um, even just strategies, right? Just strategies. Like for me myself, right? Um, I prefer to handwrite stuff. Um, I I will have things in my notes, right? My typed up notes, um, but like I don't have access to a computer myself. Right, uh, my, my partner has a computer, right, a laptop, but uh, they're always on it, so uh, it's few and far between, right? I'm using it right now, but these are like scheduled times where I'm allowed to use this. Um, so I'm mostly working off of a phone, right? Um, so for me, I'm I'm very kinetic. I like to feel things. I like to like if I write it down, I that's gonna be easier for me to remember. I put it in um, with my own hand. I know that it's there, um, and I can also get it down a lot quicker. So. I like to just write things down. Um, 
that's my own, own personal style. That's not going to be the same for somebody else. It might not be for you, right? Um, a lot of these things are, um, this is how I do it. This is what has helped me. This is what I've realized is useful, but these are suggestions. These are um, things that may work for you. It's going to be important for you to uh, decide what works best for you. Um, you need to find your own strategies and uh, experience things for yourself. Um, find new methods and, and do what, what works best for you. But overall, um, just find an organizational style and make sure that you keep to it and that you keep organized um, before, during, and after the term. Um, I say after uh, because you're not done on, on the day that it ends, right? Um, especially for Kingdom Monarch, goodness gracious. Um, there's a lot of stuff you have to hand over. Uh, lots of passwords and um, emails and even just knowledge, just like, oh, hey, this is coming up, this is coming up, and this is coming up. Uh, also, these weren't done and this has to be, okay, this is all the overflow. Like, there's lots of stuff that um, you have to, it's a transition period, right? Um, for those that are American, just like when uh, a president is is changing hands to another president, there is a transition period where they get them all caught up and then they're able to switch off um, for the other president to be in charge. I'm assuming it's the same process as prime minister. I'm, I'm assuming it's just prime minister stuff. So when a prime minister uh, switches to another prime minister, that period of transition, same thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and this, this also goes for any office, really. Um, there's going to be a period of transition where uh, you need to hand off everything and you need to make sure that they are caught up in everything. Um, the handover is very, very important. Um, and it absolutely needs to happen and it needs to be done quickly and it needs to be done efficiently. Um, if if I hold on to everything and, and don't send over everything for the next three months after I'm out of office, I have... I have... I have... Astronomically... Um, just failed completely as a monarch and um have caused detrimental harm to my successor right whoever has to do this next uh they will they will start off with no tools with no knowledge of what's happening uh and that is extraordinarily unacceptable like do not <laughs> um as quickly as possible hand over everything answer all the questions make sure that they're caught up let, make sure that they know everything that they need to know um that is right a continuation thing especially for stuff with the interkingdom com um because there's still going to be um discussions that haven't been made into proposals yet but are about to be um or proposals that are up but then uh the voting period might be past your term right who knows what we're up for right uh these things happen there's, there's so much that i needed to to figure out about um situations where it was like two years prior and I needed to have information from back then of uh, a situation that was going on to be voted on and I was just like oh my god I have to do all this past research right and, and that was no fault of the monarch performing because they weren't given that information either right um, and they weren't a uh, part of uh, that vote or discussion um, when I was going into you know the thing um so it's just a lot of it's much of the back stuff you can send off um is important so you know you you want to give the the next monarch the best odds of success um and again all office is teamwork right you are still a part of this team this is you are you are um it's a relay your kingdom it, your your parks are is, is one constant relay race and every officer is on the same team and it's just a matter of who is getting handed the baton when if you drop the baton on your way out um saying sucks to be you keep running um that's it they're out you have now made that person's job of picking it up and continuing the race so much harder because you did not finish your job and you did not uh, consider yourself or them part of the team. So understanding the importance of the handoff and also understanding 
Uh, future down the line, you might end up in the same office or an adjacent office, and you dropping the baton at X time could end up just biting you in the butt X amount of time in the future. So why would you do that anyways? Doesn't seem logical to me. So understand that it will have repercussions like a butterfly effect. Oh, see? Okay, so that's monarch butterflies. We had this whole crazy thing about monarch butterflies and it came around in the end. There you go, Rajavia. <laughs> And I have to do, apparently, a whole, like, I'm gonna do like, a whole mockumentary um, <laughs> class on monarch butterflies uh, due to inside jokes and nonsense. Just for you, Rajavia. <laughs> and Edward Joe. Y'all are nuts and I love you. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so that's ooh, organization skills. Sorry, tangents. Um, time management. That's also right, we sort of went over this a whole bunch before. Um, a lot of just boundaries, understanding. Um, <laughs> came, just, came just for the butterflies. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, time management, right? Your time is going to be split up amongst a whole bunch of things. Um, with your mundane life, with, um, with your duties in office, and uh, how folks expect you to spend your time and what is needed and what is time sensitive and all that sort of stuff. It's um, every time you get a thing, a uh, request, a meeting, something like that, uh, prioritize it into order of precedence, right? Order of uh, uh, time sensitive matters and organize everything. Just figure out what is the most important thing. Sometimes you can take care of something very quickly and it might not be the most important thing, but it's off the list. You don't have to worry about it later. Then we, you can focus more time on the other things. But sometimes it's, this is a very tiny thing this way, so this will be the last thing on the list that you're going to get to. Um, also, again, folks will not understand that, and they will expect that uh, you get there right off the bat and, and take care of the thing, not understanding that you have actual, like, NDA, uh, time-sensitive emergency... Um, situations uh that have precedent over um can you give me your opinion on this random thing random like yes <laughs> um get there when you can get there but understand that the precedent order of precedence is extraordinarily important um things that are time sensitive you really really need to prioritize uh so understanding how to prioritize and um order of importance. Um, sometimes that order of importance is going to be a mundane thing. Sometimes it's going to be an emergency situation um, with yourself or your loved ones. Um, and sometimes that's going to have to come first. Um, again, it's important that you talk with your team, make sure that they are whatever you're willing to disclose, of course, um, even so much as a family emergency. I cannot be online tonight. Can you guys make sure that, you know, folks know that you're on call? Because I cannot be. Right? Communication, teamwork, um, time management, prioritizing. So, more or less, stuff like that. Okay. Um, self awareness. Oh, <sighs> this is a big one. These, these, these last two things are, are very, very big um, and sort of kind of go hand in hand. Um, Two things. Uh, it's important not to uh, surround yourself with uh, yes men, um, but it's also important not to surround yourself with super toxic people. Um, it's good for somebody to tell you what's going down. Um, it's good to just know what's up, um, how you're being seen, um, what folks assume about you, what they think, uh, how well you're doing in others' eyes, right? Um, are you being commutative, right? Are you being, uh, too quiet? Are you not being transparent enough? Um, are, are folks misinterpreting you, right? A million possibilities. Um, but also, right, have a lot of self-checks, a lot of, um, 
before you ever post anything, um, especially if it's like a response to something, um, try to take a beat and um, sometimes it helps to like go into notes right on your phone or something, type up a post and sometimes never post it. Sometimes you might just have a knee-jerk reaction, a knee-jerk feeling, and, like, outrage. <laughs> um, and sometimes you need to just take a beat and not knee-jerk. Um, it's going to be very, very important never to knee-jerk. And you have to be very self-aware of yourself. Because um, sometimes there's going to be things where just folks don't know the behind the scenes. They don't know other stuff. So when they say something, and you're just like, really? Um... Take a beat and go, no, there's no reason why they would know that. There's no reason why, right, they're saying that because they're unaware of X, Y, and Z. They're not trying to be hurtful. They're not trying to be mean. They're not trying to, okay, so what is a, a rational way of reacting to this? What is this? So on and so forth. Um, but it's, it's important to know... Um, not to just every time just like whatever your knee-jerk reaction is just take a beat take a beat and go <laughs> type of a thing and sometimes it's the right thing at the right time and uh sometimes there are time sensitive things and sometimes you just you need to just be clear about a thing and it's sometimes it's just like okay for address miscommunications when you see them especially that um because you don't want a spiral effect of, um, of just miscommunication going down and then all of a sudden it's just like, it can spiral out really, really quickly. Um, especially in text. I hate text so much. <laughs> um, I know it's, it kind of drives me crazy just to see some forums and things where, um, there's just like debates happening and they'll be just like, um, crazy just sub thread of people yelling at each other and freaking out um and then it'll be all based on this one piece of information that wasn't correct and like four hours of people yelling is like so n none of that needed to happen because this was this is actually this okay so now everyone knows that so so all of that was wasted energy and emotion for nothing okay cool like um so if you if you see it and you're able to to jump on that right um that's a little more tangenty than what i was trying to get that um just uh, be aware of yourself be aware of your um know what your boundaries are know what uh your limitations are right um and this kind of goes into the mental and physical health right um know what you physically and mentally can do um be kind to yourself um give yourself um understanding um do not be too hard on yourself because you're gonna have a whole lot of people are gonna be hard on you enough um you don't want to be your own worst enemy um, so you need some, some self-love at some points, uh, where you just go, you know, no, you're doing your best. You're doing your best. Um, and, and that's, sometimes that's going to have to be enough. Um, it's, it can be a very rough job. Mentally and physically it can be a very rough job. Um, so it's, again, before you declare, you got to know that that's the thing. You got to know that that's absolutely a thing that's going to happen. It's going to be very taxing on both things, your mental and your physical health. Um, when, when folks are demanding things of you, uh, 24 seven, and I mean that quite literally, um, you have to be able to, to tend to both your, your physical and your mental health. Um, so know what your strategies are, um, have, have folks in your life that can help you in those moments, right? Um, you want to have all of that sort of in place. Right, um, somebody that you can talk to, somebody um, that can assist you if you become ill or injured, something like that. Right, um, again, uh, just being very close and transparent with your team. Um, but it's it's usually something that folks don't consider 
um, they go through the list of, okay, I need to do this X, Y, and Z as part of my job. Okay, cool. Um, but they don't consider uh, the toll that it takes. Um, and for this role specifically, uh, it's it's mental health more than physical. Um, it It's very, very demanding on mental health. Um, you are going to get into a lot of situations where, uh, you know, uh, I've you know said it before, right? Where you feel that you're taking for granted, people are walking all over you. Um, you are, <laughs> understand it's a thankless job. Um, you're going to get to a point to where uh, you're going to tell yourself you're not worth it, that you are not good enough, uh, that you're a failure, you're going to do intrusive thoughts, and you're going to just... Um, it is important that you are self-aware and you understand when that is happening. Um, it is important that, that you remember the reason why you're doing it. Um, and it's important that you set boundaries, um, so that certain things, right, and you are communicating well, um, so that you don't end up in a real bad situation, right? Um, you just gotta be careful. You gotta be careful and you gotta be self-aware and you gotta have yourself a good team. <laughs> good team um, that you can talk to. Uh, venting is very important. So um, knowing who is safe to vent to um, is big. <laughs> very, very big. Um, and what you can vent about is also going to be very, very uh, critical for you to understand because there are going to be things that you cannot discuss um, and there are things that like legally uh, morally you cannot discuss um, with anyone and that stuff's gonna weigh on you um, I know that's been a big thing for the uh, folks that are volunteers for the odd lidsman program um, uh, there's been a lot of a lot of cases with that where folks need to like take a time out from amp guard because of the um, just the emotional toll of having having to know a lot of terrible things and having no way to uh, to vent and get it off of their chest and uh, for them to be able to process and move on and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of, right, and again, a lot of just getting yelled at, um, folks being unreasonable and unrealistic and right, that's every volunteer position in AmpGuard. <laughs> that, that is 100% every job. Um, and it really, there's, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. Um, we are, we are in a situation where everything in this game is run by volunteers. Um, these are people that are taking time out of their lives to do stuff that other people are, are, there's their entire careers, their nine to five jobs. Um, and we do this stuff for free and it's a lot of work to do for free. Um, and just understanding the toll that can have on a person. And I don't think that, uh, I don't, I don't think that we really keep that in mind when we are working with our volunteers. Um, and I mean this for quite literally every, everything, not just office. Um, so I, I guess the best thing that I can do also is just, uh, remember that every volunteer is, is in a thankless position. So, don't let it be a thankless position. Um, thank your officers. Uh, thank your, or if you're right, the kingdom monarch, thank your, your fellow monarchs. Um, thank, thank all the volunteers that, that are working with you. Thank all the folks that are running events. Thank all of the folks that are, um, that are in positions that are, that are serving your kingdom. Just thank everyone. Thank them often. Um, let them know how appreciated they are and how much what they do matters. Um, like, you're, you're not going to be in a situation where you're, you're likely going to get that for yourself. So just know what it feels like and make sure that you're doing it for others. Right? Um, especially at right, this level, you want to make sure that you are um, you're taking care of the folks underneath you. It's very, very important that you're, you're watching out for them. Because they're feeling it. Um, and it gets, it gets heavy, you know? Um, so take care of them and make sure that, that you remind them, uh, 
how much you care about what they're doing and how much you appreciate them and thank them. It's the best advice I can give. <laughs> Make sure thankless jobs are not thankless. Um, yeah, this has been a lot. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a bit, a bit deep at times. Um, so that is the last, the last slide I got. So uh, at this time, again, if anyone has any uh, final questions, I'll go quickly through, uh, see if I've missed anything. Um, doo -doo -doo. And again, uh, if you are here, please uh, remember to sign in. Um, goodness gracious, you have earned it. It's been quite some time. Um, again, that's on the Nine Blades Discord. And you can do it in any room, but uh, most folks are doing it on the featured park. So, uh, and again, if you have any questions, you can post either in the featured park or here on Twitch. There's a 20 second delay, so uh, please be sure to, to send any random questions you got um, now so that I know that they're in. Because if I don't see anything, and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, we're done. And then 20 seconds pass, and then there's questions pop up. Don't want that to happen. Splendid. Okay. Doop -doop -doop. Okay. We're good. We got that 20 second delay. Just making sure that there are no last minute questions. Um, at any point after this class, if you think of something later, uh, feel free to message me. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, yeah. But other than that, I think we are gonna wrap up. Um, Thank you so much for, for everyone uh, that, that came out to this, and thank you to anyone that's watching this in the future. Um, I very much appreciate it. Very, very much. And uh, thank you for, for those that gave questions. I appreciate that as well. Um, doop, doop, doop. Just want to make sure I'm not going to miss anything. Oh! And my traditional 20 second silly dance for Rajavia as a tradition. This is to make sure that there are no last minute questions that I'm going to miss. I always do random silly dance and end with those jazz hands for Rajavia. Um, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Jazz hands. Always jazz hands. <laughs> Okay, I think we'll close it up then. Um, again, thank you so very much for coming out here. Um, this has been Admiral's Academia, uh, Monarch Kingdom versus Local. I've been Admiral and Cash, I'm just Admiral. Um, thank you so very much for coming and uh, take care of one another, take care of yourself and have yourself a good evening.